Hey everyone, welcome to The Word on the Street Is with Michael and Gabby, where we mention it all about your favorite Bravo celebrities and the shows they star in. We are super excited to have a former Real Housewife on the podcast. It's the first time uh, on The Word on the Street Is. Um, you might remember Peggy Tanos from the golden days of OC, like from the really, really good days of OC. We miss those a lot. Uh, so welcome, Peggy. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. And I'm so excited. I didn't know I was the first uh, alum. So I'm super excited to be on. It's pretty hey. exciting. <laughs> you started with the best. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had we've had other Bravo celebrities on, but you're our first real housewife, which we're really stoked about. And like I said, um, I truly feel like you were on the golden days of OC. I feel like this season just really isn't like what it used to be, like the season with you and Alexis and Tamara and Vicky, like it just, the dynamic isn't the same. Are you watching this current season, Peggy? You know, I have to um, say I, I really am not. I watched a, the first two episodes because I've become friends with Jen Armstrong that's on there. And so I went to her premiere party and we had like a little premiere party for her at a friend's house. So I kind of had to watch that episode and I think I watched one more, but um, I just, one, I don't have the time, but secondly, I also kind of agree with you. I feel like um, my, you know, I wasn't the original seasons that was like way back, but I feel like my era was really a good era. And I feel like now they just have gotten so crazy where it's just, everyone's like fighting for camera time and to, you know, to make sure they can, re, you know, come back next year and whatever. So I don't know. I just feel like it's it's way crazier and way, way more drama nowadays. Yeah, because the first couple seasons, that was like the first Housewives ever. So it wasn't like Housewives. There kind of really wasn't like a formula yet. Um, but when, when you were on, it was kind of like finally hitting its groove. And that was like one of my favorite casts. So oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, same. And you were there for like the infamous wine throw when Tamara threw the wine on Gina Keo. I know. And I feel like that was my fault because uh, Tamara didn't even want to talk to her. And I, and I went over to Gina and I'm like, I just need to like you guys to like talk about this. I think we should, you know, get you guys to reconcile. And so I grabbed Tamara and um, I drug her over there and I did not know that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you I, set up like one of the most iconic housewives fights. <laughs> I set it up, but I didn't do it. Like it, was, it wasn't like I did it. Like, you know, I didn't, no one told me to do it and I didn't yeah. do it to cause harm and or like I was hoping for a good response but it didn't turn out that way <laughs> yeah you had good intentions for sure and I exactly. actually am just finishing up reading not all diamonds and rosé by Dave Quinn which you are quoted in several times and you mentioned that exactly how you really didn't mean for that to happen but it led to like that infamous uh moment yeah I, I've, I've read the book as well I mean all of us bravo Housewives, we all got uh, copies of it and it's, it's a great book. He did a great job. It's really fabulous. Um, I noticed that Gretchen was not in it. Do you know why that is? You know, I think she, we're, Gretchen and I are good friends. I, I see her probably not, I was seeing her for a while almost every week, but I see her at least a couple times a month. I think she just felt like she didn't, you know, it wasn't something she wanted to be a part of. Oh, okay. Well, I, I can't speak for her, but I think she just felt like, you know, with things like that, you never know how, even though you can, tell the person certain things you just don't know how it's going to be written and you know yeah so yeah it, it almost feels like she's a part of the book even though she's she's not in it because she's mentioned so much I mean she was an integral part of OC like Gretchen really was a part of like the glory days as well and she's Absolutely. like what you think of too when you think of like blonde bombshell on OC and like she had her crazy storylines with Jeff and Slade so um yeah I, I wish we could have heard a little bit from her because I, I miss Gretchen yeah she's so happy now she's got her little girl Skylar and she, they're doing really well yeah, yeah they do look really happy yeah well since we were just talking about what Gretchen's up to Peggy can you tell us like a little bit about what, like what you've been up to lately yeah, I'm super busy being a mom. That's probably, you know, wife and a mom. That's number one. But I just filmed two weeks ago. I filmed a new show that will be coming out in June. So be sure to watch on my Instagram at OC Peggy Tanos. Um, I'll be, you know, promoting it and stuff. But I did the show. So it's it's a love show and it's called Reality of Love. It's going to be on um, DirecTV. And I believe they have it on some other networks coming up. We just haven't been able to tell people which ones yet. Um, but it's... Uh, so that it's a six episode series and um, myself and Megan King 
and Elizabeth Vargas and Tiffany Moon from Dallas Housewives. We were all on one of the episodes. It was a housewife episode. Oh, cool. um, I actually co-hosted it. And the creator of the show and the host um, is this love guru, amazing. um, I don't want to say like, she's not a love doctor, but she's like a love therapist. And um, her name's Nicole Moore. So it's what our episode was about was the curse of the housewives and you know a lot of the people that get divorced and so it was really fun I had a great time and it was great because I had never met uh, Megan in person and I had never met Elizabeth well I had never met any of the girls in person so we were all I was friendly with all of them online but we had never met in person so that was really fun to get to meet everybody in person and we had a great show I think it's gonna be a really really good show yeah I can't wait to watch that so that was really fun um and then I've been doing um I have another show I've been doing on my own that I'm the host of and that one we're hopefully we we started filming back in October and November and then we took a little break for Christmas um and then we're supposed to start back up next month um and then I just had an incredible meeting on Monday for um two other shows that I would be hosting so Oh, wow. wow. You're busy, busy. <laughs> yeah. And then I do a lot of Instagram marketing. So I do a lot of influencer yeah. work and gosh, what else? I have my fitness DVD that sells on Amazon and, um, was writing for a magazine for a while. So yeah, just staying busy. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I remember seeing in your stories, you posting with Megan and Elizabeth and I reposted about that. And I thought that looked really interesting. And I was wondering what that was all about. So thanks for, for giving us the the, the BTS on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hopefully I didn't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to watch that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And we yeah. are big fans of Tiffany on Dallas oh, yeah. as well. So she's so sweet. She's hilarious too. She's got a really funny, quirky sense of humor. And, um, and, you know, after the, um, the day of filming, we got these incredible gift bags and I was watching her like do her like unboxing and it was just hilarious. She's like in the hotel room and she's like, oh, okay. Someone's telling me to try the tequila. I guess I'll try it. And she's like walking around the room like, oh, I don't have anything to drink out of. Okay. Well, maybe I'll just, you know, drink out of this coffee mug. And she was really funny. (laughs) Yeah. I follow her on TikTok and her TikToks are really hilarious too. Speaking of Tiffany um, from Dallas, are there any other housewives from other franchises that you're friends with? Yeah, it's, you know, what I love about the Housewife franchise is once you're part of it, you're always part of it. It's kind of like a sorority. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've stayed in touch with quite a few girls. I'm I'm friends with, now I'm friends with Tiffany. Um, I was already friends with the other Tiffany that started the first season of Dallas, Tiffany Hendra. Mm -hmm. And we knew each other out here in LA because we had done some modeling stuff together and um, done some other stuff. So I'm friends with her. I'm friends with Stephanie Hallman from Dallas. I was pretty close to Melissa Gorga for a while. I haven't talked to her or seen her in a while, but I always adored her. I'm friends with Phaedra from Atlanta. I'm Jill Zarin. What other ones? Am I forgetting anything? Oh, Beverly Hills, uh, Taylor. And I see Taylor down here in Orange County now because she lives in Orange County. So we run into each other and see each oh. other here at different events. Oh, I, just um, I talked to Dana from Beverly Hills. She, there's a couple of girls, like one or two from DC that- Oh yeah. Linda, um, I think Linda and I are friends on Twitter. Linda, um, Mary. And then Deandra, I love Deandra from Dallas. Actually, oh, we were, yeah. I was just, I was in Dallas like a year ago and we were trying to get together. I love her. Have you met her mom? So I've met Deandra and we've hung out, but I haven't met her mom, but we've actually become friends like online. And so we'll send each other messages and, you know, she's really funny. Yeah. We love Mama D. I I kind of freaked out when she started following us on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. She's great. So we wanted to like circle back a little bit to OC and ask you like, what, like, what did you learn the most about yourself? Like from watching yourself back, like from being on camera? Absolutely. Um, when I was on, it was such a unique experience because I came from regular TV. So I was a SAG actress more so than acting. I did commercials and hosting um, and then the whole modeling world. So when I went on the show, I was so hesitant about doing reality. Cause I'm like, oh my God, people in SAG are going to hate me for doing reality. Um, and now it's become like, you know, the hottest thing. But beyond that, my kids were so young and I had postpartum depression. So when I went on, I feel like it was such a, it was just a, like a weird time for me. So now, like, I just, I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, who I, who was I? And then I'll be out and people are like, oh my God, you're so funny. And you're so like in your face, you know, I didn't see that about you on the show too much. And I said, well, because I was, it was so new to me and I was just so nervous. And then I was so met, like kind of mentally just not 
we were all together because of the postpartum depression. And then because I couldn't handle it, like physically, it was like making me like just too stressed out. So I ended up leaving, even though I had signed a five-year contract, I left after the, you know, when going into the second season, I filmed a little bit of the second season, well, my second season, but it was technically season seven. Looking back, I'm like, gosh, you know, I realized how much like something like postpartum mental illness can really affect, you know, who you are. And even though I think I, I, I was shown in a good light and I was shown like who I am, but I also feel like people didn't get to see the even like crazy or not crazy in a bad way, but like really fun, outgoing, outspoken, no filter Peggy. Yeah. Yeah. We always say like, it's tough for housewives that only get one season because it kind of takes a season. I feel like to get the jitters out and kind of get comfortable on camera and like, with the castmates and everything. So for the Absolutely. most part, I'm like, I feel like everyone does, does kind of deserve a second season in that aspect. Well, I did actually talk to, um, I was at a Bravo party and, and uh, one of the owners and producers of, uh, of the production company, he was like, oh my God, like, where was this Peggy, you know? And he's like, why don't you come in and talk about coming back on? And I told him I was really, I really didn't want to come back on as a full-time housewife because I wanted to focus more on my hosting and my family and things like that. Whereas if you're full-time, you have to give it so much more of your time. Yeah. And so it really didn't make, um, when we, when we really kind of talked about it and hashed it out, it didn't really make sense because I hadn't stayed in touch. I felt like because I was in a weird space with the postpartum depression that if I was going to truly leave, I had to like walk away and, and kind of like cut ties, like not talk to the girls and just, you know, like they'll ask you if you want to, once you're not on anymore, they'll ask you if you want to come film at a party or do whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. Cause I felt like if I did, it would just make me either want to go back or make me like, you know, um, upset with myself or, um, regret that I chose to leave. Yeah. And so I kind of cut ties. And so he was like, well, it doesn't really make sense though. If you come back as a friend, cause you haven't really stayed friends or been filming as a friend. So he's like, why don't you just film a couple scenes and then see how you feel and see if you kind of get back in the groove. And then if you do, then maybe you know, slowly you could come in as a friend or something. And and so they never, never ended up airing any of it, which was too bad because one of the scenes was really funny. It was when it was Peggy Salahian's first year. And so there was like a scene where I'm like, oh, well, they, I'm the real, like I'm the original Peggy. So you have a lot to live up to. And I was just like Razner and it was so cute, but they didn't end up using it. Mm -hmm. So, but after that, I just, I was like, just from the few times I filmed, I'm like, mm, I just, just didn't feel like it was my thing. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, what about something like the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip? Is that something you'd ever be interested in doing? I think it'd be fun. So, hey, anyone out there <laughs> listening, Andy, <laughs> or anybody else, you know, what? I think it would be fun because it's girls from all different franchises mm -hmm. and it's not so focused on, you know, okay, we're all living in the city and we all have to, you know, pretend we're besties, you know, even if we're not and you know, not pretend, but like, you know, I'm saying like, you, yeah. you're, you're thrown into a cast of women that some of them, you probably truly are friends with them. I and mean, I was truly friends with Alexis, but then the other women you're just getting to know. And so it makes it difficult. Whereas I think a ultimate girls trip, is just like a fun trip. And you're like, all right, we're only doing this for a week or two and mm -hmm. we get to just have fun and sure there's going to be natural drama that occurs, but I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. It seems a lot more laid back and it's not like, you know, you're so focused on your storyline or the drama as much. And I've seen some, I'm like people on Instagram, like Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip, Housewives that have only been on for like one season. So I feel like that would be a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be fun. And the other nice thing is, is it doesn't involve your family. And I know, you know, my girls were so young when I filmed yeah. and now they're actually teenagers. And I'm like, yeah. I would not want them to film during the teenage years because it's very difficult. They're like moody and whatever. <laughs> I like that the Ultimate Girls Trip is just the women go and have fun and you don't yeah. have to do worry about your husband. You don't have to worry about your kids. You can just go have fun. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. Your kids were just babies when you, when you were on the show, that's right. Yeah. London was, um, well, Capri was a year and London was three when we filmed and then going into season seven, they were like two and a half and four. So yeah, I mean, it's been like 10 years. Wow. wow. And they probably don't remember any of it. Do they? Oh no. And it's funny because everyone's like, Oh, have they watched it? And I go, I don't even let them, you know, they don't watch it now. And then I've never even let them watch our episodes. I think I let them watch one and they were dying. They thought it was so <laughs> fun. The scene where Alexis and I go to the park and my daughter was speaking like, full sentences practically and <laughs> <laughs> and her daughter was 
was not. And it was like, it was so stupid. They were making it it into this competition. But my daughter was like, oh, I did speak really well at that age. I go, yeah, you did. (laughs) Yeah, that would be interesting watching yourself back at such a young age. Yeah, I definitely feel like maybe it was the editing, but it felt like when you came onto the show, they were setting us up to be like, oh, is this Alexis's like blonde rival? Like, is this like the new girl in town that Alexis is going to be competing with? Yeah, it was sad because I mean, we we truly were friends before yeah. we started filming. And so it just kind of worked out that way. But yeah, that's such a bummer. So prior to filming, had you like watched the show? Did you have any like expectations going in? I hadn't really watched it. I um so season, I think it was season two. I had never heard of it. And then season two, I was filming a job, a modeling job for Allergan. And I was doing a video for them. And one of the producers on set that day, he overheard the makeup artist and I talking. And I think I had either just gotten engaged or just got married. And he was like, oh, would you ever be interested in doing this show I'm I'm, I'm working on? And I said, you know, he was one of the guys that would work and he did other stuff too. So I go, I don't know, what is it? And he told me and I'm like, oh, I don't even watch reality. I don't even know you know, what it is. So I, I watched it then and I was like, uh. and at the time they were had, all the girls were in Cota de Casa. And so he had asked me like, do you live in Cota de Casa? I said, no. And he's like, oh, we're kind of keeping it in Cota de Casa. So it didn't really work. I mean, it wouldn't have worked out anyhow, but I wasn't really interested at that time because I was like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you fast forward like six years and Alexis got on. And then I remember she called me and she's like, they're looking for someone for next season. I think you should come on so that we could, you know, have a true friendship on there. And I was like, oh God, I don't know. And that, cause reality still was just starting to get kind of like big. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. And then she kind of really talked me into it. And I was like, well, I guess it doesn't hurt to try. So, yeah. So you mentioned that you still talk to Gretchen. Is there anyone else from your cast that you talk to at all? I talk to Vicky every now and then. Um, I, I saw her recently and she's actually dating. Kelly Dodd had set, set her up with a guy that I've known for like 25 years and he's a really good guy. So, so we haven't gotten together with them, but like we've talked about, you know, about getting together. And so I see her, I talk to Lizzie like every day. I see Lizzie like at least once a week. Our kids play together a lot. Um, I talk to, sometimes I'll run into Peggy Salahi and she's very sweet. We don't really talk on the phone or anything, but I see her. I talk to Gina and I run into Gina quite a bit. Um, I just met Noella not too long ago and um, she was very sweet. And what I loved about her was she was just so genuine. And a lot of people, when they come on, I don't know why they always want to say like, I never watched it, but I think everyone's watched it at some point. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, I know exactly who you are. And I remember when your husband bought you the gun on the camera and you were shooting (laughs) You were like shooting a gun with like these Gucci heels on and you were so hot and, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, oh my God, you're so cute. Like she knew everything. So I thought that was cute yeah. that she, you know, was just real about it. So she was very sweet. I've gotten to know Jen Armstrong. Well, I actually knew Jen from years ago. She actually had Lynn Curtin. So Lynn and I talk all the time as well. Lynn Curtin, love Lynn. Um, so Lynn and I had got asked by Jen years ago to host like a party at her um, practice okay. and bring in some people. And so that's when I first met her. And then when I heard she was on this year, I was like, oh my God. And we ran into each other somewhere and caught up. And then we kind of just started talking. Oh, that is so cool. So yeah, I talked to to a lot of, I mean, almost everybody. And and then from my season, I think from my season, occasionally I'll, um, uh, Tamara and I got, just kind of got reconnected and I'll talk to her, you know, we're sometimes on online. So I think the only person I probably don't talk to from our season is um, Alexis. So, and I've, I've tried, you know, we've seen each other at different things. And I've tried to, you know, kind of extend an olive branch and she didn't really have any desire. So I'm like, okay, it's not meant to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd think she'd be past that now, especially now that she's not even with Jim anymore. Yeah, I know. But yeah, she's yeah. really happy with her new guy. They were actually charter guests on Below Deck. I don't know if you watched that show. I um, heard that they were, but I didn't see it. Do you watch any other um, shows on Bravo that are like non Real Housewives shows? I'm so bad. I really don't because I don't have the time. I mean, during the day, I'm so busy. And then at night, you know, I'm helping kids with homework, getting dinner. And then a lot of times, you know, we're out, we go to a lot of events, we're, you know, constantly doing charity stuff. So I really don't have time to watch a lot of shows. And I feel like during COVID, we got so into series yeah, mm-hmm. and like obsessed with some of them. And so now we've just gotten to into the habit of watching series. So like we love Yellowstone and we watched all the old Dexters and then we just watched all the new ones. And 
so we just got into so many different series that I just haven't really turned on Bravo. I mean, I'll watch, <laughs> you know, watch what happens live sometimes, but yeah. Oh yeah. That's always really fun. Yeah. We love watch what happens live. So if there's like one thing that you would want viewers to know about you that you didn't feel like was portrayed on the show, what would that be? Oh gosh. I mean, I, I feel like everyone goes through so many different stages in their life and you're constantly growing. So I don't think there was anything that like viewers missed out on other than, like I said, now I'm, I kind of get the business more of reality. And so I'd probably, you know, be more just outspoken and, you know, like that. But other than that, I, I don't think so. I, I would say actually what um, a lot of people, which is kind of sad to me, but a lot of people when the episode on my season came out where my daughter uh, cut her finger, people were like, oh my God, you were so dramatic. And it's like, unless you've ever had some form of a mental illness and you can really be in someone's shoes, you really shouldn't judge or be an asshole about it because it's crazy. Like I can't even explain, you know, like the depression, postpartum depression, it was just so weird. And, and then it brought on so much anxiety. So when my daughter cut her finger, people are like, oh, you're so dramatic. Well, maybe it was dramatic, but when you're in my shoes, like at that point, yeah, I couldn't explain it. Like I didn't, you know, people could be like, well, why, why, why'd you get so freaked out? Well, I don't know. That's just my body was like reacting. So I think if anything, I'd say like, don't judge people because you don't really know unless you've walked in those shoes. Yeah. And a lot of Bravo fans are very critical and very just like flat out really rude. <laughs> yeah. So, and I feel like with social media now, I think it's a lot different than even back on season six. So you have to have tough skin to go on a reality show. Absolutely. You have to have tough skin. Uh, don't read comments and you have to just let things like, like, which is part of tough skin, but you have to let things slide. So yeah. if, you know, someone calls and says, Oh, guess what? We read this, you know, or whatever. Oh, okay, whatever. I know the truth. Who cares? Whatever, you know? Yeah. So, and it's also an edited show. They can spin things how they want to, you know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't know if you remember, I I'm into horoscopes. I don't follow, like, I don't read my horoscope every day, but I'm just into like signs. Me too. And, um, I remember they were asking me about my daughter and she's a Scorpio. Well, Gretchen's a Scorpio. And so they changed it to where like it was edited to make it look like I was saying like Gretchen's dramatic or whatever. And it I was talking about my daughter. And so I remember I, you know, I, she was like, Oh my gosh. And I called and I'm like, girl, I did not say that. And so we laugh about it. Like recently we even brought it up like, Oh God, you remember how stupid that was <laughs> 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 like stupid that we got upset about it, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. The producers are shady. Well, they're doing their job. And, you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants a good show. So, you know, for sure. Yeah, whatever they have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to say a huge thank you to Peggy for being on our podcast. The word on the street is we had so much fun hearing about the behind the scenes of the Real Housewives of OC, who you're still in touch with, and all the other fun facts that you've shared with us. Um, so if you could like plug your social media and any other thing that you'd like to share with our listeners, that would be great. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention you were asking who I uh, still talk to. I also hang out with Lydia a lot and I just adore her. She's so great. And her husband's uh, and their magazine, Nobleman, is just beautiful. I'm so glad you guys had me on. It was fun being the first housewife. And uh, thank you so much. And yeah, you can follow me at OC Peggy Tanos on Instagram. I'm just Peggy Tanos on Twitter. I've got a Peggy Tanos fan page on Facebook. I do not have TikTok and I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> 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 There's too many to worry about. Yeah. Um, if you want to look for my fitness DVD, it's uh, still available on Amazon. It's a 30 minute total body workout with your toddler. And just look out for the new show that's coming out in June. I'll be posting about that. And then hopefully my other new shows will be starting to film soon. Yeah, we'll definitely be watching that and probably talking about it on the podcast too, because we love a good crossover. Yeah. Well, thank you again. It was such a pleasure to talk with you, Peggy. Thank you, both of you. You guys have a good night. You too. Thanks. You Bye. too.